Hi third graders, welcome to your first U of I lesson. Today we are going to talk about pointillism and then we will create some of our very own art. Pointillism. I'm wondering if you've ever heard that word before. Well, to give you a little bit of context, it is a specific type of post-impressionism. So remember we studied impressionism, Monet, and then we studied post-impressionism like Van Gogh. So this is a specific type of post-impressionism. So today we're going to investigate what makes pointillism unique. So first we're going to make a hypothesis about what it is. So you might start thinking about that already. Second, we'll investigate a couple of examples. Third, you will get to meet the master of pointillism, Georges Seurat, and we'll meet him in a video. And fourth, you will get to experiment with the style. So first, let's make a hypothesis. And a hypothesis is a guess, an educated guess. So since it's been a little while, first I want you to just take a moment to think about what you remember about Impressionism. That was our lesson in plain air out on the picnic benches painting the flat irons. And post-Impressionism your lesson with Emily about Vincent Van Gogh. Take a few moments, and while you're thinking about that, I'm going to put up a few pictures on the slide of both Impressionism and Post-Impressionism. What do you recall about what these artists valued, about how they painted, about what they were trying to do with their art? Here are some of the things that I brainstormed. If you remember any of these, you can give yourself a yes. First of all, impressionists were interested in, like the name sounds, capturing an impression or a moment in time. They were really interested in light and shadows. I remember Layla saying it made her feel warm and that's a common response to impressionism because they're trying to capture light, which makes us feel warm. These artists used art to express emotion and feeling of a moment, not just the subject matter, but really how it felt. Oh, there's Olive. They also painted art quickly with loose strokes, often outside, or in French, that's en plein air, meaning simply outside. And you'll remember we painted with our fingers to capture that uh, quick artistic style. Some of the most famous impressionists are Monet, Renoir, Cassatt, and Degas. Some very famous post-impressionists, the artists who came after the impressionists and pushed that style a little bit farther, are Vincent van Gogh, Paul Gauguin, and George Seurat. So all of that was to jog our memory. If pointillism is a specific type of post-impressionism, just like is a, a square is a particular type of rectangle, what do we think pointillism could be? So your next prompt is to look at this word, pointillism, pointillism. Do you see any familiar words? Hmm. Impressionism, ism is there. How about the beginning of the word, point, pointillism? <laughs> any guesses about what that might be? Keep that guess in your head. I won't spoil the surprise. And let's investigate some examples to see if what we're hypothesizing might be correct. As always, I want you to be thinking about what elements of art you notice. Things about the lines, the colors, shapes and space, texture and value of these paintings. And these will all be paintings. So a hint artist is that you may want to look up close and a little bit farther away at these paintings. These are all by George Seurat. They're all examples of pointillism. And they were all painted in the late 1800s. So about 200 years ago. We're going to take a few more moments 
colors are you seeing? What types of shapes? What are you thinking about your guess about what pointillism is? Let's compare what you came up with and what I came up with. So I noticed that instead of lines, there were dots. Did anyone else notice that? I saw mostly light pastel colors and I noticed really organic natural shapes, not many geometric ones. I did see some triangles in the sailboat. And another sailboat here, hmm, actually quite a few boats in his paintings. But I didn't see many geometric shapes like squares, rectangles, rhombuses. Fourth, there is a lot of positive space and not much negative space. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So if you remember, positive space is when we color in what we're trying to show, and negative space is when we leave space empty. So I see some negative space in the sky here, and you could argue that this sailboat is negative space, but mostly Surratt has used positive space. To me, all of the dots made the texture look a little bit bumpy. And they also made it look like there's a wide range of value or shading. So the next thing that we're going to do is watch a short video. And this is it's kind of like a little comic. It's really fun. And we'll see uh, George Surratt or a representation of him. He is no longer alive, but this is a video about him. And just a quick note, if for some reason the quality isn't very good, feel free to follow the link in the Google Slides and then you can watch it and come back to our slideshow. But I'll play it here too. the construction of the Eiffel Tower, a most magnificent feat. You see it being put together piece by piece, and in the end, voila, one masterpiece. Uh -huh. It looks very different up close. Indeed, it's made of little pieces. Ooh, look, Dada, look at this. <laughs> Dada, crazy, a painting of colored dots. Dots? What are you talking about, Dada? It's a beautiful sunny day by the water. Well, up close it's one thing, and far away it's another, like the Eiffel Tower. Bit by bit, dot by dot, I constructed a whole painting. Monsieur Seurat, 
You must be really, really patient. May we? It took me two years to paint this. I call it a Sunday afternoon on the island of La Grande Jacques. Oh, oh, oh. And all made out of colored dots. <laughs> yes. Instead of mixing the colors first, then painting them on, I let the eyes of the person looking mix the colors instead. Like that color just, Godal. Except this painting isn't spinning, so that's why I am. Mais non, non, the spinning won't help. You must go close and far away. Okay, that sounds better. And I won't get so busy. <laughs> Yellow and blue dots. Look like green leaves. And that lady's purple pom-pom. Red and blue dots make purple magic. <laughs> and there's so much to see in the painting. finished it. It's just like we're in the audience, looking up at the dancers. Dada, wow, I like the shoelaces. Do you have the same shape for the hanging lamp? Oh, and the mustaches, the flowers, and the lady's expression. And look at their legs. <laughs> They're all stretched for me. Oui, oui, I'm having a lot of fun with this painting. <laughs> It looks like you have a lot of fun here in Paris, Monsieur Saha. It's fun just to look at the painting. Yeah! Dada, it looks like you belong in the painting. Ah, oui. I will paint a jolly man right in that corner. That is perfect. And I just saw something here, Monsieur Saha. Look at this, Dada. The colors of the musician's jacket. It's purpley. It looks so just like what I was trying to do for my butterfly. Yup, all dots. I can paint my butterfly with dots. I have called painting like this pointillism, which means made of dots. Dark colored points to form a hat. Then light color ones, like this, to make his face. Oui. Then some lips, some dark dots to outline his coat. Fill it in with lighter dots and some hair, and voila! Bravo, Monsieur Serra! It's excellent! This was fun! <laughs> Thank you so much, Monsieur Serra. It was indeed my pleasure. Come visit me again, if you please. We will! Goodbye! Hopefully you enjoyed meeting Georges Seurat. So what did pointillism mean, third graders? Yep, if you said made up of dots, you are exactly correct. So a little bit of background about Seurat that wasn't co covered in that video. He was really interested in the science and the chemistry of paints and everything that went into art. So he actually got to know some chemists and some scientists and began to really study color. 
And that is how he came up with the idea to let our eyes do the mixing of the colors. So he created pointillism because he believed that our eyes would mix them, just like when Dada showed the spinning wheel of yellow and blue, but our eyes see green. He believed that our eyes would do that for colors that were right next to each other as well. So something that we use this in and why I included Mario, as you might see on my slide, is because this is exactly how computers work today. When we look at computer screens, it's actually made up of millions of small pixels of colors next to each other. And our eyes blend them together to make it look like, like you see in the Lego, it looks like there's shading, like there's gradients, but actually it's many points of color. So without further ado, let's make some art. So just like Surat, we will use tiny dots of color, but instead of using paint brushes, we will use Q-tips. So what you'll need for this project is your watercolor paper, and all of this was in your go-home bag. So you can take a second to pause the video once I've showed what you need. You can gather your materials, or if you need to take a break, you're always welcome to, and you can come back and do the art project. The art project should take about 15 minutes, just to give you an idea, but you're always welcome to take more time if you'd like to. So you'll need your watercolor paper, that's the one that has uh, a slight texture to it, a pencil, mechanical or just a regular pencil is fine, your watercolor paints, scratch paper and that's just to put down on a surface to make sure that we don't get any paint on our furniture. You'll need water in a cup that you can mix it in so not mom's finest china or dad's finest china. And paper towels and last a pair of scissors if you'd like to cut uh, your watercolor paper which I would recommend because like for George Surratt how it took two years to do a painting pointillism takes quite a while. So step number one, you'll get all your materials together and lay your scratch paper down on your workspace. So I have that laid down here. Then what you'll do is cut from your watercolor paper the size of a bookmark. Today we're going to making pointillism bookmarks. So you can go ahead and cut. And I've made mine about this size, so it's about the size of my hand. My hand's a little bigger than yours, but it's probably about, I'd say seven inches, but it's up to you what size you want to do. There's the side I painted. The next thing that you'll do is lightly sketch a design of what you'd like to paint. And it is totally up to you. Again, you can pause and take a moment to think about what you'd like to paint. My inspiration, was my favorite flower, which is an orchid. Surat did a lot of paintings of the outdoors, of parks, of sailboats, of animals. So it's really up to you. You could try your name. You could try your favorite book character or TV character, your favorite animal. Or you could try something nice and simple, like a butterfly. So once you've done that, you are ready to paint. And you will be painting with your Q-tips and your watercolor paints. And what I found, you can experiment, but what I found works well is to get your Q-tip wet. So I'm dipping my Q-tip in the water to get the color ready that you want to use. So like in the video, I'm going to try to create a purple butterfly by putting next to each other red dots and blue dots and seeing if our eyes will blend the colors. So I've gotten the red nice and wet. I've swirled it around. I might do a couple of practice dots on my paper towel. That looks good, it looks ready. And then I simply paint one dot at a time. And when my Q-tip starts to get dry, I'll either add more water or just go back to my paint. Now, when I want to do a new color, I will use the other side of the Q-tip, or if I've used both sides, I will get a new Q-tip. Because remember, we want our eyes to do the blending. 
not our Q-tips. So now I'm wetting and preparing the blue paint. I'm gonna do a couple of practice dots on my paper towel. That looks good, it looks about like I want it, not too wet, not too dry. And now I'm dabbing blue dots in between the red dots. And this is how we will do our entire bookmark, wetting the paints when we need to if they get dry, and just taking our time with this. Now when you finish artists, you're welcome to keep this bookmark, or if you'd like to, you can give it to a family member or friend, or we actually sent home enough paper that if you'd like to make two or three more, you are welcome to. So these would be great birthday gifts, or just something to send your friend in the mail to let them know you're thinking about them, maybe a kindness buddy, or just an act of kindness for a neighbor. So here is where I am so far on my butterfly. You might notice I'm bringing it really close to the screen and you can see red and blue dots. But what happens when it's far away? It looks purple. So I'm gonna continue on with that. Enjoy your project. And here's the other one that I did. This one I did in really light colors. And you'll see here I blended blue and yellow. But from far away, it looks like green. And that was of my orchid, one of my very favorite flowers. So third graders, I hope you enjoyed your pointillism lesson. And when you're finished, I would love to see pictures of the bookmarks you created. And that is it for now. Enjoy and remember when you're finished, we'll be using our watercolor paints several times. So you can just close them up, make sure the paintbrush is still with them. We will use the paintbrush in the future. And everything else you can either recycle if you didn't get the paper uh, covered in paint or you can throw it away and clean up your workspace. And thanks for joining. I hope you enjoyed learning about George Surratt and I'll see you soon.